Horse Castle. I'm your tour guide today. My name is Elaine and today we're going to take a, a closer look at the Lower South Duplex. So when you think about Hearst Castle, this is not what you picture. Uh, and that's because we're behind the house. And these are, show the unfinished parts of the house. Remember when Mr. Hearst spoke with Julia Morgan about building a little something here on the hilltop in 1919, he just wanted bungalows. And he told her it'll only take two years. And instead, it took 28 years. And this is what became of the bungalows. Basically, it turned into a little Mediterranean village that we see today. Uh, so if you see anything up here with a limestone face and teakwood cornice, those are the finished parts. If you see anything just raw and concrete like the building behind me, uh, these are the unfinished parts that Mr. Hurst didn't get to. Now, when they decided to extend the north and south wing around 1927, it kind of left a gap in between the main buildings and the wings. And this gap, originally, Mr. Hurst wanted to use as a light well, uh, something to allow more light into the Doge's Suite. The Doge's Suite, one of the first suites you'll see on the Upstairs Suites Tour, and it's also one of the more elaborate suites here that you see on the hilltop. And then later he changes his mind. Julia Morgan did make a comment about Mr. Hurst's changeableness of mind. This could explain why it takes 28 years to build here and they never finish. And what he changed his mind about was he didn't want it to leave, he didn't want to leave it as light wells. He wanted to actually put in more bedroom suites. And here on the hilltop, a bedroom suite consists of a bed, a bathroom, and also a sitting room. Now, the design challenge for Julia Morgan is that the gaps in between the buildings is 12 feet wide, 40 feet high. How is she going to fit a bedroom suite in something so narrow? Now, not only did Julia Morgan pull it off, but the duplex suite is one of the most unique looking bedroom suites you'll see here on the hilltop. We're now at the Lower South Duplex. If you were a guest of Mr. Hurst, normally you would get a phone call from his secretary and a lot of the people took a train from LA to San Luis Obispo. He would have cars waiting for you there. When you got up to the hilltop, you either got a cottage, uh, we have three guest cottages here on the property, or a bedroom suite. And one of the bedroom suites you could have been assigned to is the Lower South Duplex. So we are now in the Lower South Duplex, and just to kind of show you what Julia Morgan was working with, the gap in between the wings and the main building is 12 feet wide and 40 feet high. She's got to put a bedroom suite in this short gap, and this is what Julia Morgan comes up with. To have the sitting room down here, you got your bathroom right over there, and when you're ready to go to bed, climb up and uh, head on up to your loft bedroom. Now, a duplex suite, exactly like this one, is on top of this one. And the same goes for the north wing. So four duplex suites, one on top of the other, and that's how Julia Morgan maximizes this space. In your sitting room, you are surrounded by Mr. Hurst's antiques. Uh, and he stays on this Mediterranean revival style. This is basically the theme for the entire hilltop, 16th, 17th century Spanish Italian. In your fireplace, you have a 15th century Italian stone mantle while you're warming your feet. Now, this isn't the only way that you can warm up your room. Most of the rooms here on the hilltop actually have a heater. In this particular room, there is also a heater here as well, and it's right over here. This is a Wessick Radiant Coil Heater, and believe it or not, it still works to this day, and we still use it. Mr. Hirsch always had electricity on the hilltop, 
Uh, he built a hydroelectric plant here on the hill up until the power company could provide power for him in the 20s. An item here in this room that not a lot of visitors notice is the 16th century Spanish chest. That's because it's kind of tucked away here in the corner. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. Uh, it's really beautiful, made out of walnut with gold gilding. This kind of chest was known as a marriage chest. Marriage chest was really ornate a highly decorative dowry chest, usually given to the bride and placed in the bridal suite and given to the bride during the wedding. This particular marriage chest has drawers on the right side to put your valuables in. The painting on the lid depicts Saint Peter fleeing persecution in Rome, and this is the encounter he had with Christ on the road, and he asked, Domine co vadis? which is Latin for Lord, where are you going? Now, the fact that this particular chest has drawers means this was a chest meant for a woman, also known as something called a hembra. The counterpart for a chest is uh, for a man, which only has one large compartment, and that is known as a macho. Up above you is a ceiling, mostly modern and gilded with gold leaf. One of the paintings that you see here is Neptune. It's French, 17th century. The artist Simone Vouet was also Louis XIII's court painter. Neptune is a Roman god of the sea, and he's on his chariot and holding his trident. Now there's another painting here in the South Duplex, and it's really hard to see here in the sitting room, but since nobody's here, let's head on up to the loft. Another painting that we see here on the loft bedroom is the one right above us. And appropriately, it's above your bed. This is Luna, goddess of the moon, and she falls in love with Endymion. And on her request, the god Jupiter grants Endymion uh, immortality by making him sleep forever. So it looks like Luna found the perfect man, good looking and low maintenance. Not only were you surrounded by antiques, but you were probably sleeping on one. For example, the bed here in the loft is Spanish, 16th century. The painting right next to you is of the Madonna and Child, late 15th to early 16th century by Antonello da Salva. A lot of the paintings, or a lot of Madonna and Child paintings here, uh, and a very common question we get from visitors is why does the infant Jesus look kind of like a 30-year-old guy? Uh, he looks like a little man in a lot of the paintings prior to the Renaissance. And that was because artists were drawing baby Jesus at the time with the idea that baby Jesus was born perfectly formed and unchanged, as if he was a wise 30-year-old man from the get-go. It was something called homunculus, which literally translates into little man, and it became a standard way of depicting Jesus in paintings. Now you still see little man Jesus in the Renaissance too, but in the Renaissance, cute babies make more of an appearance. Not only because artists were now wanting to paint and depict what was actually seen, but in non-religious art commissioned by private patrons, those, patron, those patrons wanted their babies to look like babies and not a 30 year old man. So who yeah. stayed in the duplex suites? Now we don't have a lot of records on who stayed in what room, although actor Cary Grant does remember staying in the duplex suites. And in the 40s, a lot of Mr. Hurst's employees also used the duplex suites. For example, switchboard operator Anita Mensicola and his secretary in the 40s too, Roland Dragon. Uh, another common question we get here is, uh, which one is your favorite room? And I have to say, my answer to that is uh, one of the rooms that I like here is the Lower South Duplex. Because not only is it majestic, like all the other suites here on the hilltop, but it's also majestic and kind of cozy. So if I could have a chance to stay in any of the rooms, the Duplex Suite would probably be it. Folks, thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of the Lower South Duplex. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I think I speak for all the guides here at Hearst Castle when we say we look forward to your visit here to the future. But for now, stay safe, 
Then we'll bring the castle to you.